Here's a home phone, and here's a home phone. They're both reliable and provide unlimited local calls. But that's where the similarities end. This one includes more than 18 popular calling features, like call waiting, caller ID, three-way calling, and call forwarding. The other one charges extra for those, as much as $34.50 more a month if you add them all up. This one includes voicemail. The other one does not. This one has low long distance rates, just 15 cents a minute to the US. The other one charges 47 cents a minute for the same thing. So, which one would you choose for your home phone? This one is Rev Voice, and you can get it for as low as $14.99 a month. Rev Voice, the better choice. Sign up for Rev Voice Home Phone for as low as $14.99 a month. You could win great weekly prizes and be entered to win our grand prize, a brand new Honda CRV. Call us at 601-8992 or visit us online at cablebahamas.com slash revvoice. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Christina McNeil. And this is MB12 for Thursday, January 10th, 2013, broadcasting from the Cable 12 studios on Robinson Road. Coming up tonight in news, the Prime Minister lashes out at cable and wireless communications and BTC during the Bahamas Business Outlook this morning. The Bahamas economy expected to see modest growth in 2013. Government jobs may be on the way for some former city market workers, while the opposition raises concern over the pension and severance pay owed to those workers and celebrating 46 years of majority rule in schools across the Bahamas. We have those stories and much more coming up tonight. Your MB12 starts right now. Joining us. As senior officials from the Bahamas Telecommunications Company looked on, Prime Minister Perry Christie took cable and wireless communications to task this morning over its decision to divest itself of its European holdings. Christie, who was the keynote speaker at Bahamas Business Outlook 2013, questioned the implications of this move. He once again criticized the company over the quality of its service, adding that anyone who believes government has given up on its plan to regain a majority stake in BTC is sadly mistaken. Vonique Toot reports. During today's Bahamas Business Outlook seminar, the Prime Minister expressed concern about CWC's intent to limit itself to this region. Last month, CWC reportedly agreed to sell its assets in Monaco and some islands to Bahrain Telecommunications Company in a deal worth up to $1 billion. It will allow the operator to focus on a smaller geographical area. That's not sitting well with Prime Minister Christie. I am advised that cable and wireless has divested itself of all of its European holdings. As Prime Minister, I should be concerned as to whether that has implications to the decision that led to them coming into the Bahamas. Was it because they were a major player worldwide and now they're reducing themselves to this region? Is this a conversation, a private conversation? No. Christie reminded CWC today that government owns 49 percent of BTC's shares. Therefore, he says he has an obligation to protect that investment. He suggested that the company should instead be working on becoming more efficient. And people shouldn't get vexed. If as the prime minister, I have to dial a number three times from my house to the cabinet, not from my house, from my office to the cabinet because of drop calls. He then shifted his focus to government's efforts to regain a majority stake in BTC, insisting that despite some recent setbacks, government has not given up. We are going to have a resolution to this matter. And I hope it will be manifestly in both the best interest of the people of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas and the shareholders of cable and wireless. There is, as the saying goes, a position that we could adopt where everybody wins. 
BTC CEO Jeff Houston, who was also a featured speaker at today's conference, had a lengthy discussion with the Prime Minister following his keynote address. Houston assured him that the Bahamas would benefit from the divestment of some areas of CWC's business. And the company has made no secret of its ambition to invest more in the Caribbean and uh, Central America region. So as part of that strategy, uh, which our chief executive in London has talked about, it is to refocus the business, which means divestment of other, other areas of the business. And so I see nothing but positive coming out of that change for, for our business here in the Caribbean and Central America. It's going to be a, cent a bigger center of attention. It's going to receive a lot more investment. As for the quality of service. We understand there are a few service issues still that we're, can, we're starting to fix. But you know, by and large, over the last three months, we have made significant inroads into closing the gap in a, in a lot of those areas. There are still one or two little areas we need to fix still. Reporting for NB12, I'm Vonik Toot. Well, the Bahamian economy is expected to grow by 2.7 percent this year. That's up from the 2.5 percent growth projected by the International Monetary Fund in 2012. Prime Minister Christie shed light on the state of the economy today during Bahamas Business Outlook 2013, which attracted top members of the business community. He says while the Bahamas is still confronted with the daunting economic and social challenges, government is cautiously optimistic. For this year, the fund still forecasts real growth on the order of 2.7 percent. While this is somewhat encouraging, it is equally clear that we must strive to do much better, especially if we are to create adequate job opportunities for Bahamians and make a significant dent in the national rate of unemployment, which unfortunately still remains at an unacceptably high level. Christie says the country's spending is now outpacing its ability to find revenue to match, insisting that there has to be a turning point. While government stands to make tens of millions of dollars each year if the referendum questions pass this month, the Prime Minister says that's still not enough. There is absolutely no doubt that um, if in fact there is a yes vote, there has to be regulation very quickly, um, there has to be taxation very quickly, and even that which may be a significant addition to the revenue base, is not sufficient for us um, to proceed without now pausing as a country to look at a new form of taxation. Government will try to secure jobs for former city market employees who still haven't found work since the grocery store chain shut down last year. Prime Minister Perry Christie told reporters today he has requested the names of those people who remain unemployed to help alleviate the financial burden placed on them. His comments come one day after more than two dozen former city market workers protested outside of the House of Assembly over unpaid severance and pension funds they claim the defunct company owes them. They made a case to us of people who are in acute pain and really lots of the people have not yet found employment. So I've asked them to provide me with a list of the names of the people who have not been working over this period of time and what they do to see whether on an, in another kind of area we are able to help them to locate um, employment so they could actually adjust to their circumstances a little bit better. Former workers called on government to pay them to bring some relief in the interim. However, the Prime Minister says the government has too many other financial obligations like cost overruns associated with the new Providence Road Improvement Project. It's very difficult for the government to find um, four million dollars, for example, to make the payments. It's been difficult for us, and I don't know, I didn't say in there today, but you know, we've carried into this year, we've carried the payment for those roads into this year, we're carrying the payment for those roads into our next year's budget. And so we, we have a lot of obligations that we've inherited that requires the judicious management of the funds we have. We understand that $1.4 million was offered to the group of workers, but that offer was declined. A group spokesperson said hundreds of former city market workers are owed in excess of $3 million in severance pay alone, of which not one penny has been paid. 
And the Free National Movement is accusing the government of using taxpayer dollars to bail out a private company's pension fund. It all came to a head in the House of Assembly yesterday evening when Deputy Leader of the Opposition Loretta Butler-Turner accused the government of cronyism. Paige McCartney reports. The City Market Warehouse on the East-West Highway was last appraised at $9 million in 2009, but the owners weren't able to find a buyer. Now the government is eyeing the facility and it isn't sitting well with the FNM. When City Markets closed its doors last year, it left nearly 200 employees out of work and still owes them nearly $3 million in severance and pension pay. The chain of stores, which was owned by the Finlayson family, closed its last branch in June last year, and since then, former employees have been agitating for what is owed to them. The National Insurance Board is proposing to purchase City Market's warehouse, but has not made an offer. Well, yesterday in the House of Assembly, Opposition Deputy Leader Loretta Butler-Turner suggested the purchase would be a bailout for the pension fund and the former owners of Bahamas Supermarkets Limited. We know the familial ties with all of these things on that building at City Market. I just hope that that doesn't allow anything to become distorted or clouded when we look at that. And so, Mr. Speaker, I caution, I would like to know why these particular acquisitions, if they are even under consideration, should not be put on hold until this whole debacle at NIB has been sorted out. Because, Mr. Speaker, it appears to me that we're now taking the government's money, NIB, the people's money, which is also a pension fund. Yes, it seems that we're taking that to bail out another pension fund from the private sector. Minister of National Insurance Shane Gibson said if the government decides to purchase the building, it would be necessary used as a customs warehouse space. I, I think it is wrong for the member to give the impression, Mr. Speaker, that, that the government or NIB is trying to bail out anybody. There is a need for warehouse space. The building is available. We have not made any offers. The only thing we did is we asked them to complete an appraisal. And if, depending on the condition of the building, depending on whether or not we can get it at a good price, not at a regular price, at a good price, we'll determine whether or not we uh, uh, make an offer to the owners to purchase the building. When MB12 spoke with former president of Bahamas Supermarkets Limited, Mark Finlayson, in an exclusive interview in September 2011, Finlayson said former owners of the city market chain used $3 million from the pension money and invested in equipment for the Cable Beach location. He insisted then that employees had nothing to worry about. The building itself belongs to the trust. The building belongs to the trust. It does not belong to Bahama Supermarkets. Bahama Supermarkets rents from the trust, right? The employees are the beneficiaries of that trust, right? So their interest is in the building, right? And there's nothing that Bahama Supermarkets, um, you know, the Bahama Supermarkets is not tied to that at all. Bahama, if, if the worst were to happen, Bahama Supermarkets were to go away, they will, the building itself remains the property of the trust on behalf of, and is held on behalf of those, those employees. But the government is blaming an absence of legislation and a lack of regulations to protect pension funds in the Bahamas being the reason why City Market's owners were able to use money from the pension fund. It was raised as the government debated the Employees' Pension Fund Protection Bill. For MB12, I'm Paige McCartney.